All right, boys and girls, we are going to read Action Jackson by Jan Greenberg and Sandra Jordan, illustrated by Robert Andrew Parker. The wind blows in the gardener's bay, bringing the scent of salt marshes and sea lavender. His eyes miss nothing, sunlight on the tree branches, tangled stalks of blackberry bushes, beetles crawling on the grass underfoot. Caw, caw, the crow he tamed, flies down and lands on his shoulder. His boulder, border collie, Gip, runs in circles demanding a walk across the fields and down a country road to the wide sandy beach. But Jackson turns and keeps going. The gray weathered barn used to be filled with rusted machinery, old fishing gear and broken tools. Now it's his art studio, a place for painting. Some artists put a canvas on an easel or hang it on a wall, not Jackson. He spreads his out like a sheet, smoothing it flat with his large hands. He wants his paintings to be big, big as the sky out west where he grew up, flat, flat as the marshland behind the house. Sunlight pokes through the cracks in the boards and flies buzz in the dusty studio air. Sliding doors rattle on their frames. He sits silent on the floor, staring at the blank canvas. Some artists cover the canvas with a base coat of white paint, not Jackson. He wants the paint to soak into the surface, leaving bare patches peeking through the stains of color. Some painters use oil paint or watercolor, not Jackson. He'll use ordinary house paint from the hardware store to make his painting. Some artists paint pictures of flowers or people or landscapes, not Jackson. He expresses his thoughts and feelings directly on the canvas, calling it energy and motion made visible. And he still just sits, surrounded by the cans of enamel, brushes stiff with dried paint, knives, sticks, a spatula, and canvases, waiting. At last, he stands. He chooses a stick and dips it in a can of syrupy paint. Slowly, he circles the canvas, stepping around the edges, straddling the corners. Black lines form a tangled web. Now he chooses a brush working toward the middle. Sprays of color, tan, teal, yellow, and white. An athlete with a paintbrush, he uses his whole body to make the painting. Layers build with each gesture, new colors emerging, blending, and disappearing into the wet surface. He swoops and leaps like a dancer, paint trailing from a brush that doesn't touch the canvas. I want to make a longer and longer line. I want it to keep going. Hours go by like minutes. Suddenly he feels exhausted, used up his inspiration. It is gone. Things get in the way of the flow, like roots blocking a soil line. He puts down the brush and goes into the house to help make supper. His mind filled with thoughts about the wet painting back on the studio floor. The next afternoon, Jackson prowls around the canvas, studying his work, but he doesn't pick up a brush. Instead, he walks to the beach past the sandy marshes and the tall sparks in the grass that waves in the breeze. He spends hours sitting on a grassy dune, watching the gulls, which the gulls are like the birds. In the barn, the layers of paint dry. Almost a week passes before he dips a brush and begins his dance. What is he thinking? Does he see the sunlit beach, the patterns of waves, the interlacing branches of the trees, the lush summer grass outside his studio? I don't know where my pictures come from. They just come. And the paint flows. Like the Native American sand painters he saw as a boy out west, he moves around the canvas co coaxing the paint into loops and curves. On the floor, I am much more at ease. I can walk around it, work from the four sides, be in the painting. Fireworks splatter of rosy pink, twisting ropes of white, spangles of silver, a lavender glow where pink and blue black meet.
Jackson listens to jazz recordings in the evenings. He likes musicians who impro improvise, inventing their own melodies as they play. While he paints, the notes spin over and over in his memory. Swish and swish again. The rhythm of the brush matches the rhythm of the music. If a penny fell out of his pocket, he would leave it. An insect lands in the wet paint, and there it is. There it stays. Nails and tacks become part of the texture. He caresses the surface with sticky, paint-stained hands. One, then two, handprints across the canvas. His eyes move up and down, back and forth. With light steps, he follows the sweep of his brush. He stops, and a pool of paint pauses. Paint, paint, and more paint. Dripping, pouring, flinging. The painting has a life of its own. I try to let it come through. Again, he stops. He climbs a ladder to look down at the whole canvas. Every muscle aches, but his eyes, his mind, and his heart know the painting is finished. Some people will be shocked when they see what has been created. Some angry, some confused, some excited, some filled with a happiness they can hardly explain. But everyone will agree. Jackson Pollock is doing something original, painting in a way that no one else has ever seen before. This is one of the paintings that he created in 1950 called Number One Lavender Mist. And this actually made it into the National Gallery of Art in Washington, D.C. For the next few days, he and his wife, Lee, plant the vegetable garden. They drive into town in their Model A Ford. He digs for clams on the beach. On the weekend, friends drop by for a party. It will take another week for the thick paint to dry. Then Jackson and Lee will tack the canvas to the studio wall. Jackson sits silent, staring at the blank, cam blank canvas spread on the floor of the barn, waiting. Soon he will dip his brush in a can of paint lifting it high in the air to begin again. And that is the story of Jackson Pollock. He was born in 1912 and died in 1956. So he did not live a long life, but he lived a life that was long enough to make an impact on the world with his art. So that was the story of Action Jackson.